What's up guys, this is Jeff from Sorta Healthy and welcome to my living room. And today I'm not taking you on a house tour because my house is really not that impressive. What I will be taking you through today is an in-home personal training session that hopefully is impressive. So things don't always go so perfectly in an in-home personal training session. There's gonna be dogs, uh, there might be kids, there's cars in the background. So again, we're gonna take you through all that because those are the kinds of things that you're also going to experience when you're doing these sessions on your own. As always, this is our test subject for today, Alexis. How are you today, Alexis? I'm good. Okay, Alexis is a 30 year old female and she's mainly focused on weight loss. She has no injuries or anything for us to be concerned about. So we're just gonna jump right in. If you're gonna be doing in-home personal training, there are a few pieces of equipment that you should definitely have. One is a nice big backpack because of course you're gonna be hauling around all kinds of crazy equipment. Today we have some sliders. Alexis is very excited about those. We have uh, some bands and there's a bag of mini bands connected to that. So we do have some regular bands. What I don't recommend, and unfortunately I learned this the hard way, is to haul around a bunch of dumbbells. Maybe you wanna leave a few in your car if you're driving to people's houses, but um, if you're trying to climb up a flight of stairs and you have a whole bunch of dumbbells in your backpack, that's gonna mess you up over time. I speak from experience, definitely messed up my shoulder a few times trying to lug heavy dumbbells up flights of stairs through narrow corridors, stuff like that. So try and, try and kinda keep everything light. Another piece of equipment we also have is a stability ball. And these are really useful for a whole bunch of different things. And obviously they don't weigh anything. So you can just keep one of these in the back of your car and uh, it's really easy to use. Oh yeah, we also have a mat. Can't forget about the mat. Okay, so we're gonna kick things off with a warm up. Uh, all the warm ups I use in my sessions for the most part are dynamic warm ups. And in general, they should just prepare you for the session to come. So Alexis, we're gonna start off with some alternating quad stretches and kind of move at like a quick pace, like just hold each side for a second or two and keep alternating sides. Very nice. She has tight quads, which we're gonna be using her quads a fair amount today. So we wanna loosen them up, get them warmed up at the same time. So again, we're doing this kind of quick, dynamically. You okay there? I'm seeing some, I'm seeing some grimaces. I almost fell. Yeah, okay. It's a good thing she didn't fall. That would have been embarrassing. That would have been bad. Let's also do some Frankensteins. Yep, I don't, always demonstrate things because I got a wire, got a camera wire right here. But uh, especially if it's like one of your first times working with a client, demonstrate everything first, right? And you're probably gonna have to demonstrate things a few times. Alexis is also a trainer. So if she doesn't know what a Frankenstein is, that's a bad sign. We're good though, she knows. <laughs> and let's do some hugs, Alexis. So basically protracting the shoulder blades kind of rounding forward and then basically after a few seconds there, the exact opposite position. So full retraction back. Yep, and just keep alternating. So we're just trying to warm up her back, get all the back and kind of shoulder muscles firing here. We'll be using those two. Today's workout is gonna be total body. Um, and again, mainly what I want to do is just give you guys who do in-home sessions some ideas, uh, help you guys come up with game plans, because you can really do a good training session with very minimal equipment in people's houses. I did it for years. I made a lot of money that way and basically it kickstarted our entire business now, which has grown into a whole bunch of different things. Um, let's also do some arm circles. And with the pandemic hopefully kind of winding down here a little bit, there's definitely going to be a void to fill. People are going to want in-home training sessions and some people aren't that comfortable going to a gym. So I think the demand is gonna be there. So our first exercise for today is the torso rotation. Torso rotation is a really good exercise to do with people in home because really all you need is a set of bands. And what I have here are two bands hooked together because Alexis is pretty strong. You know, she's, she's a personal trainer, so she lifts weights from time to time. So I'm gonna need a fairly heavy duty band here. So what she's gonna do is grab that handle, take a step or two, maybe one more step in that direction. I'm gonna hold about here, nice and tight with both hands. And Alexis, keeping your arms straight and your abs squeezed and tight, I want you to rotate to your uh, right side. I almost said left, that would have been bad. Good. And we're gonna be doing 15 reps per side. Where do you feel that most, Alexis? There it is. Ignore the loud motorcycles outside. Again. 
That's what in-home training is all about. You get all kinds of weird noises. You work out with people in their pajamas. Um, it's a weird time, but I like it. We're gonna do the same thing facing the opposite side. Obviously, if you are training somebody one-on-one, -on -one, count their reps for them. Three, I could also stand on this band here and that would be fine. Also a good option. Don't underestimate bands. Alexis is an experienced lifter and she was absolutely challenged here. How does this feel, Alexis? Easy, medium, hard? Medium. Medium is good. That's a question I ask a lot. We've talked about that in previous videos. Um, and you wanna shoot for media more often than not. All set there. Okay, Alexis, let me have you turn around, face the TV. We're gonna do our reverse lunges now. And we're gonna be shooting for 12 per side here. Now, normally I wouldn't be positioning myself staring at her butt. Um, that being said, you need to see me in the camera. And um, this is pretty much the only way that works. So, hey man, it is what it is. Looking good so far. She's doing a good job of coming straight back. The reverse lunge is often viewed as a slightly more knee-friendly version of the move. This version works best for Alexis. Here, my knee. You can hear it. Is there any pain or discomfort? No. Okay. Cracking and popping. This should be our last one right here. Doesn't mean anything. So cracking and popping, assuming there's no pain, means literally nothing. So if your client says, I can hear a creaking uh, or popping or whatever, first thing you ask, was there any pain as that was happening? If the answer is no, great, we keep going. If the answer is yes, we stop right away. Hey guys, before we get to the rest of the video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, because that allows us to make more free content for all of you and allows us to feed these little dudes. So yeah, please consider that. Please and thank you. So in today's video, we're going through everything twice and we're doing things in supersets. So we are back to torso rotations. And the only thing we're gonna change here is I'm gonna choke up on this band slightly more. Again, I could step on this band too. That would change the angle of the move. Um, for, for today, I'm just gonna be holding it nice and tight. Second round, choking up a little bit more. Alexis, keep your arms straight, elbows locked and rotate straight across, keeping your abs tight. A little too much, a little too much. All right, let's, let's try now. <laughs> a little too much, let's try now. You'll be able to do it now. There you go. Like I said, this is a heavy band. I felt weak. You feel weak? I felt weak, but I couldn't do it. Keep going, you're looking good. Could always lower the rep count if we have to. Certainly an option. Viewing this exercise from the front, I realized that I probably shouldn't have increased the difficulty with this move. I would have preferred Alexis to finish each rep here slower and more controlled. Always favor form over everything else. We are going to do the same thing on the opposite side. You always have to do this move on both sides. I'm keeping my same positioning and making sure that she's the same distance for this side. She did a slightly better job being controlled on this side because her right side is now facing me, giving her a bit of extra leverage with her dominant side. And counting in my head because most people don't like it when you count out loud. There it is. Where'd you feel that one most? Torso. Torso. Did you feel in the sides, dead center? Sides. Excellent. Always, well not always, most of the time ask, you know, where did you feel that exercise? Especially if you're in doubt, um, as to whether or not the exercise was hitting the desired area. Sometimes if people don't squeeze their abs enough as they're doing that move, they don't brace their core, they end up kind of feeling that in the lower back. And obviously we don't really want that. So always good to make sure that they're feeling it where they're supposed to be feeling it. Okay guys, we're on our second round of reverse lunges. Now I should say that with someone like Alexis, I probably would bring a few sets of light-ish dumbbells and I would have them in my car. So in round two, if round one was too easy, I would have her hold on to two different dumbbells. It's obviously a very easy way to make this exercise a little bit more challenging. I could always make her do more reps as well though. So I'm gonna pull a fast one on you, Alexis. We're gonna go for 15 per side. Roll up my sleeves. She's rolling up her sleeves, it's getting real. Two, nice, looking good. Three, lunge back a little bit further. You got plenty of room. Four, nice. You end up relying a lot on body weight um, in these workouts though. 
Nothing wrong with that. You can get a lot done with body weight. Another good way to make these lunges harder would have been to add a slight pause at the bottom of each rep. Make sure to use varying tempos in your home sessions. And that should have been it. Nice. All right, other side. Okay guys, our next exercise is a double banded row. And again, Alexis is representative of a fairly strong active client. So we have our same double band combination. What she's gonna do is she's gonna come into a flat back position. She's gonna pull, she's gonna pinch. She's gonna hold for about a full second and then she's gonna slowly come back. Okay, that's one. Good, keep going. How many more do you think you can do? I can get to 15, easy. Ooh, bold prediction. And again, I'm standing on this band here um, for obvious reasons. I trust my strength, I trust myself, but she's pulling pretty hard. So I'm just gonna stand on it, make my job a lot easier. Great, did the last few get tough? Mm -hmm. Good, another good question to ask, did the last few get challenging? Um, we want them to. We want the last three or so reps to be tough more often than not. Okay, so next up we have lateral band walk. This is actually a really good underrated exercise because you don't only want to strengthen people front to back, top to bottom, up and down. You want to strengthen people side to side as well. And for that, we have mini bands. So I'm gonna have you put this band on. It's gonna go around both of your legs and it's gonna end up kind of lower to middle shin area. The lower the band is, the harder it is. That's a pretty heavy band already. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get your hips down and back, then you're gonna move side to side across the room, always keeping a little bit of tension on that band. There's other variations of this move. This one tends to work really well. Just don't trip over my microphone wire. Again, normally I'd probably have her go a little bit further down uh, this room. I don't want her to crash into the camera though. So this is just representing a exercise that you could do with clients. I'm gonna have you do three round trips here, Alexis. That was two. Yep, one last one. How does that band feel? Easy, medium, hard? Feels good. Where do you feel most? Glutes. Side of the hip? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so we have round two of bent rows, and Alexis, we're doing the same thing. So you're gonna pull, you're gonna pinch your shoulder blades, you're gonna hold for about a full second, a little bit longer than that. And then, yep, that looks good. Here's an example of changing up the tempo to make a move harder. She was challenged here and mostly because of that one second hold at the top. It's perfect so far. I will not let this puppy distract me. 10, looking good. Two, good one, last one. There it is, very nice. Okay, so now we have round two of the lateral band walk. Not her most graceful time putting on the band. Always tell your people that they can sit down in like a chair or on a couch when they're putting their band on. Literally, I do always tell people that um, because that can happen. They can fall over. Okay, so just try not to bump into me or the camera as you're going side to side. You can go this way. Watch out for Mr. Puppy over here. Good, and she's keeping constant tension on that band. Nice. Again, we're gonna do three round trips across the room. So all the way down, all the way back, times three. It's one round trip so far. Constant tension, Alexis. You're letting that band go slack. Okay, our next exercise is slider mountain climbers. And these are pretty tough. We're also gonna be doing the slow motion version where she's only moving one leg at a time because I find this version of the exercise is actually better for hitting certain core muscles. So that's what we're going with. It's also a little bit more controlled, which is nice when you're working in a smaller environment. And this is where my watch comes in handy because now I can time Alexis. I think you could pull this off for 40 seconds. Sure. You better be able to. You're fired if you can't. Starting in three, two, one, and go. Should I actually make her do the full 40 seconds though? No. Cause I, f no? <laughs> Why are you saying it like it's so hard? So she's keeping her back flat, she's keeping her abs tight, and she's slowly sliding uh, one foot forward at a time and then all the way back before she even starts moving that other leg. You can buy these sliders for like, I don't know, nine bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link up uh, on the screen right now and I'll also put one in the video description. If you travel to people's houses or anywhere, 
even in a gym, you should have a pair of these. They're really nice. Three, two, one, good. How'd you find that? Easy, medium, hard? Hard, that means hard. Okay, so our next exercise is going to be the hamstring curl with a stability ball. So Alexis, you're gonna be lying on your back. You're gonna have both legs on the ball. And from that position, uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. So I want you to try and lift your hips up into the air, arms out just a small amount for balance. Yeah, and then dig your heels and legs into that ball as you're lifting your hips into the air and then curl that ball back in towards your body. Keep going back and forth, maintaining hip height the entire time. I wish I would have told Alexis to put more of her calf onto the ball here for extra stability. We'll fix that in round two. Five, nice. Oh, yeah, reset, that. reset. That's okay. That's going to happen here and there. How do you find it so far? Easy, medium, hard? Hard. Hard. She's got tired legs. Can you get three more? Three, two, one. Nice work, Alexis. Okay, we have round two of our mountain climbers on the sliders. We're going to shoot for 40 seconds again. She found it hard. Um, her form stayed good the entire time though, so we're gonna keep that 40 seconds. I'm gonna have you start, Alexis, in three, two, one, go. So she's slowly moving the foot forward and all the way back before she starts moving the opposite side. Good. And again, this is just a really easy exercise to do on any kind of carpeting. It wouldn't work on hardwood floors, but a really good, easy, well, not easy, a really good challenging total body exercise. She's working her core, obviously. She's working her upper body, even her lower body a little bit all at once. I'm sure she's feeling it. 10 seconds left here, Alexis. Nice, keep that same pace, slowly forward, slowly back. So her back flat, it looks pretty good. And you are all set there, 40 seconds. Good job. So we have two adjustments here for round two of the hamstring curls, one we're using a mat. And uh, some people like mats, some people don't. I usually bring one with me when I'm doing an, in, uh, doing an in-home session. Good to have one and not need it. Um, I keep a few wipes in the car too, wipe it down. Always good to have. Um, her other adjustment is she's gonna put a little bit more lower leg on the ball, so more of her calf. Um, that looks better because the ball is getting away from her a little bit in round one. So focus on the downward pressure, all the same stuff we talked about. Looks a little bit better. She still doesn't have a ton of lower leg on the ball there. Um, she could have gone with even more calf on the ball just to give a little bit of extra control. There's really no downside to that. And I would assume you're still finding it pretty tough there, Alexis. Mm -hmm. Better than last time. We just need one last one here. Our last exercise for today is going to be a plank off of the stability ball. So she's gonna have her elbows and forearms on that ball. She's gonna be keeping her back nice and flat, her abs nice and tight. Um, normally these workouts would be longer. We're not showing you a full training session. Again, my training sessions are 45 minutes long. Yours might be an hour long. This video is probably gonna be about 20 minutes, plus or minus, I don't really know. So obviously, not a full training session, but giving you some ideas, hopefully that will help you if you wanna do any in-home sessions. Okay, Alexis, let's see if we can get a minute. You can get a minute, right? Yeah. She can get a minute. Okay, go, but tell me when you go. All right, so we'll start here in three, two, one and go. Let's see if we can make sure her form is pretty. Uh, that's pretty good. She looks pretty flat. Better not be uh, faltering on that form. You are a trainer after all. So again, she has her back flat. She has her abs tight. She's maintaining that position. If she were to make her feet more narrow, this would be harder. If she were to make her feet a little bit wider apart, this would be easier. But once somebody has progressed beyond a normal plank, this is a good way to make it a little bit tougher. I don't know, how much harder do you think this version is? Way harder, just a little bit harder? Moderate. Moderate, so a bit harder then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more challenging to do a plank off the ball. I'm at. Where's she at? She is about 10 seconds away from the minute. Hang in there, Alexis. I know you can do it. She's shaking. That's good. Five, four, Three, two, one. Good job. Once the workout is over, I always like to stretch my client out. That is if they're comfortable with it. So I already know Alexis is comfortable with it, but if she wasn't, I would ask first. I'd be like, hey, Alexis, um, 
would you like me to guide you through some stretches or would you like me to stretch you out? We can do some partner assisted stretching. What do you think is better for you? They're usually going to say that um, once they know what it is because these stretches feel better, I think. So um, first thing we're going to do is a hamstring stretch. So basically with this stretch, tell me when it feels like you have a good stretch. Um, I want her to have a slight bend in her knee and I'm going to try and keep this foot facing straight ahead. You feel a stretch right about there. Since we're just staying basic for today, I'm going to hold this stretch for about 20 to 30 seconds. Um, yeah, she's she's pretty tight here. This is tighter than I remembered you being, Alexis. Mm -hmm. These hamstrings are yours. We gotta loosen these guys up. Tight today. Yeah, they're tight today. You've been doing a lot of lower body workouts. Mm -hmm. Could be part of it. And that's about 20 to 30 seconds there. Next thing we're gonna do, kind of a glute stretch. Um, she has tight hips, although this is moving better than usual. So basically I'm pushing in two different directions here. I'm pushing her leg in that direction and I'm also kind of grabbing her ankle as well. So I'm pushing her ankle and knee both towards that couch, that dog if you can see him. And we're just holding that position. Where do you feel that most, Alexis? In my hip. In your hip. That's actually not what I'm trying to stretch. She has really tight hips, so she ends up feeling that. In and it glutes. Yeah, it's more of a glute stretch for most. Okay, yeah. It depends on what you have going on. Most people are gonna feel that primarily in their glutes. She kind of has some weird hip things going on, so she sometimes will feel it there more. And we're gonna go over and across. Hip popped. Hip popped. Mm -hmm. So on this one, you don't wanna push too hard. Honestly, it's just a nice little stretch. So I'm going to pin here, pin here, and just take a few deep breaths, Alexis. I'm not trying to crack her back like a chiropractor. I'm just trying to loosen up all of the tissue on this side of her body. This one does feel pretty nice. I feel like a good stretch. Mm -hmm. So she should feel some of those muscles loosening up in her lower back, some of those muscles loosening up in her outer hip. And again, we're just holding each stretch for about 30 seconds. It really depends on how tight it is. If it doesn't feel like it needs as long of a stretch, you could even go a little bit less than 30. Typically I would do everything on the opposite side, but for today's video, you don't need to see me do that. But when you're stretching someone, make sure you do all those stretches on both sides of their body. One last stretch that I'll do with a lot of people, especially right now, is a stretch for the pecs. This is really nice because everybody is so hunched forward, so rounded forward. So anything we can do to help out with that does come in handy. Alexis, while you're seated here, let me have you clasp your hands behind the back of your head. Then what I'm gonna do is just position my knee, not forcefully, but kind of in the center of her back and I'm gonna pull everything back here. It's basically a door frame stretch. I'm just gonna hold that. Um, again, typically I would hold this for about 30 seconds. Not gonna hold it for quite that long. But that stretch is very appreciated by almost everybody right now. Like we mentioned before, in-home training is a great way to get started if you're a trainer kind of looking to segue off into doing your own thing. Be safe, make sure to have fun with your clients, and uh, good luck to all of you. If you haven't liked the video yet or subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so because it does help the channel to grow, which of course allows me to make more free content for all of you. Thank you for watching everyone and until next time, stay sorta healthy.